Assalamu alaikum friends, how are you? Welcome to question number 3. As you can see, the question number 3 is from December 2018. Okay. So, revision kit and past paper is not two separate things. In fact, the revision kit questions are the questions from the past paper only. Okay. All the past paper questions are together combined and given in the revision kit. So, as you can see, this is a group question and these are section A questions. Section A questions. The first question are your group questions. You are, as you can see, in the background you have been given the consolidated financial statements. Okay, you have been given the group statement of profit or loss and also the financial position of the group. Okay, and also you have been given following information. You can see that you have been given the pension scheme, the goodwill, the property plan and equipment inventory, changes to the group structure, then the discontinued operations. Okay. So this is how I skim through the whole case study. I just read the subheading and I know what it includes. Now I'm going to read the requirements because I always say start your question by reading requirements. And then we'll go to the case study. Okay. So part A, draft an explanatory note. If you can see the first question always asks you to draft an explanatory note. So by now you know how an explanatory note look like. Explanatory note to the directors of Moes, which should include two things has to be included and they are 12 marks. First, calculation. Okay. First is the calculation of cash generated from operations using the indirect method. Cash generated from operations only. They didn't ask you investing activities and financing activities. Only the operations, operating activities. Using which method? Indirect method. Very clear questions to the point. No doubt they have told which method to use. They told only cash generated from operations. Calculation only. Second part is the explanation part. Explanation of the specific adjustments required to the group profit before tax to calculate the cash generated from operation. Definitely. When you go to calculate the cash generated from operations, you definitely have to do some adjustments to profit before tax. So they are required. Now they want the explanation for that adjustments. And it's 12 marks. Okay. Work is can either be shown in the main body or the explanatory note of the explanatory note or an, as an appendix for 12 marks. So 12 marks, I would say you can divide equally if you want six, six, six marks for calculation, six marks for explanations, or you can give more for explanations and less for calculation. Okay, definitely explanations are always more than calculation in terms of marks, one or two marks more only. But let us keep it equal, okay? Part B, explain. Explain how the changes to the group structure and the dividend would impact upon the consolidated statement of cash flows. What is it? You have to explain. Changes to the group structure and the dividend would impact upon the consolidated statement of cash flows. At 30th September 2008, it is very important for the Moise group. You should not attempt to alter your answer to part A. You see, you should not change the answer to part A. Because part A also asked a statement of cash flow. You should not change those figures. Those figures you have to keep as it is. Here you have will show how if the group structure and dividend changes, your consolidated statement of cash flow changes. Okay, the impact you have to explain for six marks. Okay, part C. So there are so many requirements as you can see. Part A has two requirements B, then C, then D. Okay, D is the last requirement. C. Advise the director as to whether the vassal should be classified as help or sell and whether both it and Baham would be classified as should be classified as discontinued operation. There is a separate standard for it, okay, which is I or IFRS 5. So you have to advise the director whether it has to be help or sell or whether both it and this should be classified as discontinued operation. Six marks. Okay, to know that you have to know the standard of IFRS 5. Next, part D. The last question. The recognition criteria in the 2010 conceptual framework stated that a flow of economic so they are giving that recognition what is that uh, recognition criteria stating that a flow of economic benefits mu must be probable before an element can be recognized in the financial statements. However, IFRS and IES standards were criticized for applying this prob probability cri uh, criteria uh, criterion inconsistently. So the 2018 conceptual framework addressed these concerns. That shows that you have to know the 2018 conceptual framework. Only yesterday, I did 
I made a video on conceptual framework. So if you need help to answer this part, you have to go and check. There are two parts on it. First part and second part. That is my first lecture on SBR. First video, first topic on conceptual framework. Okay. Everything in depth has been explained. Okay. So what is requirement? Six marks. Explain how the probability criteriation has been inconsistently applied across accounting standards. So you have to talk about this. They have been applied inconsistently across accounting standards. Illustrate your answer with reference to the measurement of assets held for sale. You have to illustrate. How are you going to illustrate? They have told. Measurement of assets held for sale. When you are measuring the assets held for sale, then the provisions, then the contingent consideration. Transferred in a business combination. Your answer should discuss the both revised recognition criteria. You see, revised recognition criteria from 2018 conceptual work we have to discuss. How will you discuss if you have not studied the 2018 conceptual frameworks recognition criteria? Right. So this is the point you have to know it. You have to study conceptual framework, not just the I the standards. Okay, not just the accounting standards, but the conceptual framework. And the conceptual framework is not a separate accounting standard. It is like the mother of all the standards. Okay, all the standards, whether IFR or IS, is built up based on conceptual frameworks, recognition criteria, measurement, everything. Okay, so just go and check out the conceptual framework. Very, in fact, just now the video is being uploading. I've just finished a video. Uh, I was made, uh, on the second topic, which is the pro ethics. Okay, professional ethics. I've just made a video on ethics. This is being uploading now, right? It will take some time. Okay. So till then, I'm making this also the third question. Okay, because every day I'll be doing one question and one lecture. That's how. That's my plan. So that by the exam before the September exam, you're finished with the whole revision kit is also done, and also the theory part also. The the IFRS and IS standards are also covered. So one question and one uh, lecture every day. Now, let us go to the answer. Now you have an option. You can either attempt part D, you can attempt part B, C or A in any order. Okay. But I always follow the order because I always believe that no matter what, you anyway have to do it both. You have no option. If it was an optional question, then it's a choice that you, okay, I will see which one is easier, but there's no choice. So I, I prefer doing it on order. Okay. But definitely for this part, part A, this part and this part, they are linked. Okay. So I would say do the calculation first and then the explanation. Okay. Always do the first part and second part. It's linked. Second part, you need the help of first part. So do the first part and the second part lead. Okay. Follow that order. So now we are going to calculate the cash generated from operations. For that, we need to read. Okay. So discontinued operation changes to the group structure and all comes in part uh, B. Okay, that I'm not going to read for part A is not needed. I'm only going to read all this. All these things are needed. Okay. So I, I have been given here. The profit before tax is my starting point. Then I have to make some adjustments to get the cash generated from operations. Okay. I can see the inventory, pre receivers, payables has been changed and using indirect method. Okay. Then I need the help of all this pension scheme, goodwill, property plan, equipment, and inventory. These four things, four items. Okay, so let us read. Pension scheme. Moyo's operates a defined benefit scheme, a service cost component of 24 million. Has been included within operating expenses. It is within operating expenses. Definitely, this means this has to be added back. Why? Because this has been deducted when you had to calculate the profit before tax. Definitely, if it was in operating expenses, means you see it is here in this 123. That means it has been deducted, then only you get profit before tax. Now, if you want to get cash, you have to add this back. Okay. The re re measurement component for the year was a gain of 3 million. The measurement is gain of 3 million. Benefits paid out of the scheme was 31 million. Benefits paid out of the scheme is 31 million. All this, okay, you have to see the cash items and if it's inflow, you add. If it's outflow, you deduct. Contributions into the scheme. 
contributions into 15 million next is goodwill okay goodwill was reviewed for impairments of the reporting date impairment arose of time in the current year so impairment is 10 million next is probably plan and equipment at 30th of 2008 included cash additions you see cash additions on 34 million depreciation was 99 million you need depreciation because you have to do adjustments to profit before tax and impairment loss also so impairment loss 43 million was recognized prior to the impairment that is before the impairment the group had a balance on the revelation surplus of 50 million of which 20 million related to pp impaired on the current year okay so before the impairment revelation surplus had 50 million out of this 20 million related to pp impaired in the current year next is inventory last item goes for purchase for 80 million cash so this is a foreign exchange okay you need the help of the exchange fees is given no okay it is given here only one rate is given so good was purchased for dinar 80 million cash dinar 80 million cash when the exchange rate was one dollar so this was the exchange rate that time Moise had not managed to sell the goods at 32 and the net realizable value was estimated to be dinar. So, so the net realizable value was dinar 60 million. Okay, at 30 September 2008. Exchange rate at this date did was this. The inventory have been currently valued at uh, 30 September 2008 within expenses correctly included within cost of sales. So any expense correctly included within cost of sales. Okay. So definitely when we do the calculation, we can explain also at the same time. Basically, whatever you have calculated only, you are explaining, okay? So, now let us go to the answer. Before the answer, let us go to the key answer tips because I always start with that. So, this question examines what? Number one, okay, let me highlight. Consolidated statement of cash flow, number one. Second, note that the calculation of cash generated from operations was only worth six marks. And in contrast, discussions of the adjustments made to profit before tax and discussion of the impact of a changing group structure part b was worth 12 marks to succeed in sbr you must feel confident with the discursive requirements just wait a minute i just want to go to the requirement back and see the number of marks given 12 marks okay Something is wrong because it is together uh, 12 marks. Okay. So, when preparing a statement of cash flow or extracts from the statement, pay, pay careful attention to whether the figure needs bracket. Very important is this whether you have to put bracket or not. Negative figure, put bracket. If it is addition, don't put bracket. Okay. Now, let us go to the answer. Attack the answer without wasting any time. Explanatory note. Okay, so you start like this when it's an explanatory note. This is how you start. To whom are you giving this address note? You have to write it. This is for the directors of Moise. It is already told in the requirement. Okay, explanatory note for the directors of Moise. What is the subject? Always mention the subject. There should be a subject. Subject should be very short, but it should be understood. Subject means what are you doing? What is your aim? Here you are calculating. So you just write cash flow generated from operation. That's it. Now put a which part you are answering first part cash generated from operation put a subheading like this always any sbr paper any question not only sbr in acc any other paper you do start like this subheading has to be there clear subheading okay and it has to be bold bolded out the explanatory you know the subject and cash generated from operations okay what is the tutorial learn make sure that your reconciliation is clearly labeled this will have the marks to award your credit if you have made mistakes okay reconciliation means what when you have done some working when you are referring it to that working one one to make sure it's very clearly it is labeled okay so that even if you make some mistake somewhere you will be given marks for the working okay and now always drop the millions and and if, if the amount is in millions or thousands or ten thousands always drop down the zeros and then work this saves a lot of time this makes your number smaller so it's easier to calculate easier to work with smaller number rather than working with the big numbers finally you can write the amount in millions okay like this in millions dollar millions the currency is very important dollar million let us start the starting point is profit before tax number one maybe i can write the points here number one
okay number one is profit before tax whenever you are given a question cash generated from operation and indirect method they ask okay i have never seen till now they have asked direct method they always ask indirect method even if they don't ask indirect method we calculate by indirect method only even though there are two methods to calculate so profit before tax is your starting point always okay and which is 209 okay we'll see we'll keep the numbers also in front this one 200 and spend is 209 okay so this is your profit before tax from the profit profit and loss account next is share of profit of associate okay if it's a profit you add, deduct because you have added it before because now you are converting it into cash that's why you are adding the profit deducting the profit and adding the cost back why you want to convert the profit into cash that's the main aim okay so share of profit of associate was 67 it was a profit so you deduct what is that it is 67 this one now you deduct you are deducting because you have added it before next service cost component okay these are from your uh, notes service cost component 24 you see a service cost component of 24 million has been included within operating expenses before it was deducted operating expenses I mean expenses are deducted right it has to be added back that's why this 24 million this 24 million I uh, let me highlight this 24 million will be added again sorry not again it will be added now 24 okay so let me put a tick mark to show that we have finished this is over this is over this is over okay fourth item contributions into the pension scheme okay if there are any contributions into the pension scheme it will be deducted because you're giving into the pension scheme from where cash only you know cash only you will be in the pension scheme which is 15 which is here this 15 okay this 15 million contributions into the scheme okay remeasurement gain of 3 million and benefits paid out of the scheme of 31 million what timing just leave it okay that also will go so this also we have finished next impairment of goodwill definitely impairment or depreciation they are expenses they are non-cash expenses which was deducted now needs to be added back so impairment of goodwill goodwill was 10 we'll see they have told there when it was goodwill okay this 10 million in the current year so that's why you have to add it back next is depreciation depreciation is 99 okay it has been told here where under property plan and equipment depreciation is 99 99 million okay this 99 million so it will be it was deducted now it will be added back impairment it was deducted definitely the word impairment says it was deducted now it will be added how much of property plan and equipment 43 minus 20 in the bracket they are showing see when the workings are small show it next only right beside it inside the bracket okay they are workings how you got the 23 don't just put 23 like this show how you got the 23 inside the bracket 43 minus 20 okay so how 43 minus 20 let us see so for that we have to go to property plan and equipment okay why because they told that impairment loss of 43 was recognized okay from this 43 20 million only is for the current year you see impairment loss is 43 but from out of this 43 only 20 million is for the current year ppp impaired on the current year that's why you are minusing 20 okay so the balance needs to be added back yes 
next reduction in inventory so all now from here onwards there are changes in your working capital that means inventory receivable payable okay so now we'll see there are two things one is reduction in inventory the other one is loss on inventory first we'll go by reduction in inventory so to know the reduction in inventory we'll just check compare 165 to 126 okay we saw that it reduced so if it's reduced means it's a positive figure it's a cash inflow right so that's why it will be added what is the reduction 126 minus one uh, the difference and plus six why plus six for that we have to go to the inventory part okay just Mm -hmm. Okay, so goods were purchased 80 million. Okay, and the exchange rate was this dinner five. Okay, now net realizable value was dinner 60, and exchange rate is dinner six now. So, first you have to convert the dinner into dollar okay 80 divided by 5 because this is in dinner and this is also in dinner so divided 80 divided by 5 is how much it is 16 it is 16 okay then 60 it is 60 the net real value was 60 dinar but if you convert it into now you have to convert using 6 into dollar it will be 10 60 divided by 10 is 10 60 divided by 6 is 10 so 16 minus 10 okay is 6 okay net realizable value is so the difference is 6 and this six needs to be needs to be added or deducted added added with the inventory because it will increase the inventory no that's why this it is added okay it increased the inventory by six so you have added it next is loss on inventory how much six there's a six loss on inventory the way we have calculated that six only it's a loss Why it's a loss? Because your inventory increased by six. Okay, so if your inventory increased by six, it's a loss. Your net realizable value is 10, but you purchased it at 16. You purchased it in more than the net realizable value. So it's a loss of 6, the difference. Okay. That's why it's 6. Next is increase in receivable. So from here, you can see your in, uh, receivable increased. Your receivable increase means your cash, it's an outflow. Okay. That's why 7. The difference is 7. Next is payable increased. Okay. From the same table, if you see, Payable increased. Payable increase means you are having the cash for a longer time in your hands, so it's an inflow. Okay, if it's an outflow, if you see it's within the bracket, if it's an inflow without the bracket. Now with with the bracket deduct, without bracket add, this is your cash generated from operations. Triple three. What is the tutorial note? Note that the same also could have been obtained if no separate adjustment was made for a six million loss on inventories and if the reduction of inventory was presented as 39 million. Yes. The difference is now if you wouldn't have presented that six million loss you will still get the same answer how you will not give that six million loss also and you will not add the six million also here so your inventory will be reduced here there will be no loss okay so that way also you can do you don't take that six million here 
you don't put the loss also here you just take the difference between the sales and take it okay so you will get the same answer next explanations of adjustments okay now work through your calculation of cash management operation and discuss the rationale behind each adjustments so basically whatever the adjustments you made in the calculation now you are explaining it okay here also you see indirect method you are giving and that also one by one item you are explaining okay for each item you are using separate subheading this is the way you have to answer okay first we are talking about indirect method what is it So basically this you don't have to write this is not needed okay but for explanation purpose how indirect method you are calculating this is what they have given okay oh no you have to give because uh, you have to talk about adjustments no so indirect method you have to talk about it so cash flows from operating activities are principally derived from the key trading activities of entity we know operating activities means from the trading activities whatever the cash you get this will involve cash result from sale of goods okay cash payment to supplier cash payment on behalf of employee the indirect method of just okay so this is not needed this is your direct method okay the indirect method adjusts profit or loss for the effects of transaction of a non cash nature so what have, what does it do it adjusts the profit or loss for the effect of transactions of a non cash nature if there is some non cash nature non cash item which has been added or deducted now you reverse it okay so any differ deferrals or accruals from the past or future operating cash basis or payments and any items of income expense associated with investing or financing cash flows okay well, all this is not needed let us go so one by one they have given they have talked about associate they have talked about non cash flow item they have talked about pension okay they have talked about working capital so these are the few places where you did the changes what is associate didn't we uh, deducted the profit share of the associate's profit that's why they have talked so the share of the associate's profit is an item of income associated with investing activities okay you have to say why you have done the adjustments it was an investing activity okay share of profit of associate comes in investing activities only when we do that cash flow the consolidated cash flow i will explain you there Okay, we'll go through it but just for now know it the share of profit of associate is an investing activity that's why it has been deducted okay it should not come in the operating activity non cash flow so non cash flow which have reduced profit we know that non cash like depreciation impairment they have reduced profit so what happened they must be added now they must be added back what are those non cash flow one is service cost component the other one is depreciation the other one is exchange losses and impairment okay the exchange losses is that 6 million okay of from the stock that is exchange losses so impairment all these are non cash so with impairment of a property plan and the first 20 billion of impairment will be allocated to devaluation surplus you see with the impairment of property planning with the first 20 million which they told is for the current year what happened to that 20 million they will be allocated where to devaluation surplus so only 23 would have been reduced operating profits and should be added back so only this 23 million will be added back because they reduce the operating profit that's it next is pension in addition to the pension scheme the remeasurement component can be ignored okay so we have ignored the remeasurement remember there was a remeasurement of third i don't remember the figure let us see remeasurement was uh, 3 million and uh, benefits paid out of the scheme were 31 million both the two we have ignored we'll see why so remeasurement is ignored why even though it's a gain because as it is neither a cash flow okay it's not a cash flow also please understand it's a profit remeasurement nor it's an expense to operating profit it's not even an expense to operating profit 
so cash contributions should be deducted okay that's what we did we deducted the cash contributions though okay let me show you which one was that cash contribution cash contribution yes this contribution is in the best pension scheme of 15 million that is cash contribution only it has to be deducted okay though as this represent an operating cash payment utility to be received by most employees benefits paid to the retired uh, employees are carried out of the pension scheme rather than for the merchant should be so benefits paid out you see 31 million it has been ignored why benefits paid to the retired employees are a cash outflow for the pension scheme they are the cash outflow for the pension scheme rather than for the moyes it is not for the moyes it is not moyes cash outflow it is from the pension scheme it's a cash outflow please understand it the benefits paid that's why it is ignored next is working capital so the movements on receivable payable and anyway. when working capital means all three are talking about okay you can write separately also but rather than wasting your time writing separately each thing be smart enough put it under one heading and write all the three together this saves time and this is called smart technique rather than writing one by one using separate paragraphs you know you explain receivable again payable again inventory right together so movements on receivable payment inventory adjust us so that the timing differences between when cash is paid received and when the items are occurred in the financial statements are accounted for so inventories measure the lower of cost and net reusable value just that okay that's what I've told. Net reusable value we saw was 6. Whereas the cost was 16. So inventory is measured at the lower. So the inventory has suffered an overall loss of 6 million. We saw how it has suffered that loss. Okay. We have converted 80 by 5 and 60 by 6 and deducted difference. So this is not a cash flow. Please write it. It's not a cash flow. The loss is not a cash flow and it would be added back to profit. In the reconciliation however the loss of 6 million should also be adjusted in the year on year inventory moments so this loss was adjusted where even in the year on year inventory moments that's why we added it back so the net effect of this on the statement of cash loss will be nil what is the net effect of this okay the net effect of that cash loss and the changes in the cash will be same old uh, will be nil okay because it will cancel out next is part b changes in structure so what should we do students are generally good at dealing with changes in group structure and numerical questions you see numerical questions they are good but make sure that you understand the principles behind the numerical treatment so that you're able to address discursive questions as well if you can see this is discussion you need to work hard let us read the changing part changes to the group structure Definitely you will get a question related to this too. If you are getting a group questions, changes to the group structure also you will get. So let us read. During the year and the 30th September 2008, Moyes acquired a 60% subsidiary. Okay, let me highlight it. 60% that means it's a subsidiary. More than 50% subsidiary. Davenport sold all of its equity and interest in Burham for cash. Davenport subsidiary Davenport okay acquired 60 percent in Davenport and also sold it's not Davenport who sold okay Davenport is the name of the subsidiary please understand this and also sold all of its equity interest in Burham for cash and sold that means who sold Moise is the one who sold Burham for cash sold all fully gone no more subsidiary that means so the consideration for day one port that is the subsidiary's consideration what is the consideration consider our share for share exchange okay so this is a share for share exchange please understand because consideration can be in form of shares also not just cash together with some cash payable in two years so it is also with cash in two years not just share for share for share share for share plus cash making it a bit more complicated okay so 80 percent of the equity shares are burham that means burham is another party okay 80 percent of the equity shares of burham had been acquired several years ago but moise had decided to sell as the performance of burham had been poor for a number of years consequently burham had a substantial overdraft at the disposal date so burham was unable to pay any dividends during the financial year but davenport did pay an interim dividend on 37 2008 so they had 80 percent okay 
of Burham. Now they are selling because they are not performing well. Let us read the discontinued operations part 2. Okay, because when group changes means this also comes under that only. So the directors of Moet's wish advice as to whether disposal of Burham should be treated as so now. Okay, it is true they are disposing Burham, but will it be treated as discontinued operation or separately disclosed within consolidated statement of finance, profit and loss? So treated as discontinued operation or separately disclosed within consolidated statement of profit and loss. There are several other subsidiaries which all produce similar products to Burham and operate in a similar geographical area. Okay, the reason why they are giving is to know whether it is a discontinued operation or not. Similar geographical area. Geographical, they will talk about geographics and all. Additionally, Moyes hold a 52% equity interest in Watson. This is another person, okay? So, Moyes holds in three companies. Okay, one company he is holding, that is Davenport. The other one he is selling, that is uh, Barham. And now, this is third one, 52%. Still, it's a subsidiary only. Same company. Moise is the parent company, okay? This can happen. Then more than one company, you might give. Don't think it's just one to one company. He's holding a subsidiary. So, you may consult. No, no, no. There can be two, three companies together. He's dealing with a parent company. Hold. So, don't get confused between these companies. Hold 52% equity interest in Watson. Watson is the third company. Watson had previously issued share options to other entities which are accessible in the year end okay which are accessible in the year ending 30 years after 2000 that is after one year he has given share options who Watson it is highly likely that these options would be exercised which would reduce moist interest to 35 percent so it will reduce moist interest to 35 percent that means he is no more a subsidiary he becomes an associate okay and when it becomes an associate you don't consolidate so the directors of Moise request advice as to whether this loss of control would require loss of control. You see, when something reduces below 50%, it's a loss of control. Would require Watson to be classified as self and reclassified as discontinued. So because they are losing the control, they require advice. Whose advice? Your advice. Whether he will be classified as health or self or reclassified as discontinued. Health or cell and discontinued are two separate things, okay? But they are dealt under one IFR as well, IFR is 5. So now we know the background of it. Now we can answer how this will have an impact on the consolidated statement of financial position. That was the question. So if you see, okay. So changes in the group structure, changes in the structure first on the cash flow and also on the dividend. Okay, that's why there's a separate topic on dividend and it's a very small topic. But first we'll go through this one. The changes in structure, how it can have an impact on the cash flow. Okay. So let us go one by one. When the parent company acquires, okay. The first line says that when parent company acquires or sells a subsidiary during the financial year, during the financial year, okay, that means in between, he buys or sells a subsidiary, cash flows arising from the acquisition or disposal are presented as, so the cash flow which arises from those acquisition or disposal are presented as investing activities. That's the reason you start with this. Because when you acquire a subsidiary or you sell a subsidiary, there is a cash inflow or a cash outflow. If you are buying cash outflow, if you are selling cash inflow, where will that cash go? That is the first thing you have to write. It will go in the investing activities. So the main thing is cash flow go to investing activities. You cannot say it's an inflow and outflow. If you buy outflow, if you sell inflow, okay? That's why you're linking, you're talking about both acquisition and disposal. Because you are acquiring one subsidiary and you are disposing another subsidiary. That's why you are talking about both. Okay, you have to talk like this, both the side. Don't repeat sentences like when it's buying, it's going to go for cash outflow. When it says it's going to go for cash inflow. Don't repeat sentences like this. Together, you can talk about both things like this. It saves time, a lot of time. And it makes your sentences smaller, simpler and shorter. So be smart enough. 
I know when you are given much time, you can write uh, beautiful sentences and make essays and all, which is not needed. Try to make short and short. But relevant points has to be there because you are you will you will be running short of time. Okay, I guarantee you that it will happen. So don't think of writing beautifully and all. Okay, whenever you are practicing, also you have to try to make it short and specific to the point, like how they have given. Only in two lines. They have told. They when they buy a sell, acquisition or disposal, investing activity. That's it. Second paragraph. Okay, everything is in different paragraph. By the way. Not together, not in one paragraph. So, in relation to Dave and Bo, you see, this is called linking to the case study. This is how you are going to link it. People, students ask me how to link, how to link, ma'am, how to link. This is to link. This is the way to link to the case study. You are mentioning the name of the company. So, in relation to Dave and Port, what happens? Dave and Port is the subsidiary. They are not selling it off, okay? They are holding that subsidiary. The 60 percent subsidiary so no cash consideration has been paid during the current year did we, they pay cash no share for share so no cash you have to talk about it no cash has been paid during the current year because the consideration okay why no cash the consideration was what share for share exchange please mention it was share for share exchange just now we have read share for and they told cash but in two years time that is known as deferred cash that means they will pay cash later not now so currently there's no cash because the consideration was share for share exchange and deferred cash okay so now what are you going to write the deferred cash would be presented as a negative cash flow okay so the deferred cash negative cash flow why because it's an accusation my dear friends when you when you buy a company you have you are the one who are paying out the cash so cash is going out so negative cash flow you can even say cash outflow okay it does not so both are the same thing negative cash flow or cash outflow does not matter so deferred cash is negative cash outflow where where will it please cash flows are divided into three investing operating financing whenever they say about the impact on the cash flow statement you have to say in which place it will go whether it will go under investing, whether it will go under operating, whether it will go under financing. Okay. And also inflow and outflow, whether it will be an inflow or an outflow. So this is a negative cash flow and it will arise where within investing activity. Again, it will go under investing activity. When? Paid in two years time. Paid in two years time, definitely. When you pay in two years time, that time it will go in investing activity, not now. That's why in two years time. When you have paid. Because cash flow statement, only you have you record when you actually paid cash and when actually cash came in. Before that, you don't write. Okay, so they are actually saying even though deferred cash today, it will not be recorded. But it's a cash. So deferred cash in two years time, it will be an outflow and written in investing activity okay so this is how you have to write answer you are showing the impact of the cash flow statement third paragraph what is it again it is relating to dave and Port only this does not mean that there would be no impact on the current year statement of cash flow you see share for share exchange will not have an impact deferred cash will not have an impact but still they are saying it does not mean that they will not have no impact on the wait just does not so it does not mean that they will have no impact on the current year's statement of cash flow that means there will be an impact on the current year's cash flow what are those impact we'll see so on gaining control Moise would consolidate 100% of the assets and liabilities of day one put. You see on gaining control. Why gaining control they have talked about? Subsidiary, 60%. Okay, so Moise would consolidate, but even though 60%, they have acquired, but remember when you consolidate, you consolidate 100%. So you have to say that, consolidate 100% of assets and liabilities of day one put, which would presumably include some cash, you see. So when you're taking assets and liabilities, definitely cash will come, no? Either it will be an overdraft, as a, if then it will be under liabilities, 
if it's a cash in hand then it will come under assets because when you consolidate their cash will come to you that's why it will have an impact so include some cash or cash equivalent at the rate of accusation this would be presented as a cash inflow where cash inflow at the date of accusation net of any overdraft halted accusation everything is at the date of accusation remember that okay cash inflow at the date of accusation net of any overdraft why they say net of any overdraft because if there's an overdraft you always deduct it from the cash inflow the remaining one you put it as a cash inflow okay after you deduct the overdrafts whatever is remaining cash inflow next this is linked to the previous paragraph the which one two three four fourth paragraph fourth paragraph is linked to third paragraph every paragraph is linked to the previous paragraph that's how you are going to the next paragraph okay there's a link the fourth paragraph is linked to the third paragraph what is it adjustments would also be need to be made to the opening balance of assets and liabilities by adding the fair values of identifiable net assets and accusation to the respective balances you see adjustments where fair value you have to add the fair value of identifiable net assets okay with the opening balance of assets and liabilities okay so what happens because of this see everything should have an impact on the statement of cash flow otherwise don't write it if it's not having an impact say it will have no impact don't ignore i will not say no ignore but say it will have no impact okay so this would be necessarily to ensure that the only cash flow effects are reported in the okay ensure that only the cash flow effects are reported in the consolidated statement of cash flow and the fifth paragraph the fifth paragraph okay what is it disposal of you you have to talk about changes in the group structure no so not only about accusation of one subsidiary you have disposed another subsidiary talk about that also what how that will have an impact on the statement of cash flow so disposal of berham you see beginning line itself they are saying on the disposal of berham they are not explaining this will happen that will happen nothing like that to the point on the disposal of berham net assets at disposal including what are the net assets what will be included in the net assets at disposal when you disposed when definitely when you dispose something something has to go out of the balance sheet what your assets will go your liabilities will go okay that's why they are talking about net assets so under net assets what are there goodwill including goodwill okay because definitely why why specifically they talked about goodwill because other things you don't know what are the other things of berham what are the assets they have you don't know you're not sure they didn't give you the information for the berham but you definitely know there is a goodwill how because when you have acquired it some years back the berham was acquired some years back right so on the consolidation when you have acquired it definitely goodwill was there you have calculated a goodwill so that goodwill now will be removed you see imagine when you're not getting answer imagine in your mind the some years back i have purchased that time i have recorded goodwill now that goodwill will be out of my balance sheet so include that's why they have talked about including goodwill specifically you can name goodwill you know goodwill is there in your balance sheet but other assets you don't know the name specifically you don't know you know their assets but you don't know the name that's why they told net assets at disposal including goodwill are removed from the consolidated financial statements now it's disposed when disposal you remove the goodwill even the net assets including goodwill okay everything is removed so since berham is overdrawn you see berham is overdrawn this is what you are linking to the case study the facts with the case study berham is overdrawn they have told they have an overdraft this will have a positive cash flow effect for the group how isn't it surprising that he has an overdraft and it will be a positive cash flow effect for the group how we'll see how the overdraft will be added to the proceeds what proceed when you are selling you are getting proceed aren't you when you are selling berham 
If you are selling for joy, what are you selling for? How are you selling for free? This is not charity. You are not selling for free. You will get some money, right? So that proceed they are talking about. The overdraft will be added to the proceed. That overdraft will be added to the proceed. So plus and negative. So less okay. Also less any cash and cash equivalent at disposal. Why less any cash and cash equivalent at disposal? Because cash comes where? Where does cash come? Where is cash or cash equivalent recorded under which category? It is recorded at a net assets. It will come under net assets only. Right? Net assets. So you told that net assets will be removed. So net assets will be removed, means that's why you have to deduct it. Any cash they have in the beginning at the at the disposal date, it will be removed from the balance sheet. That's why they told less any cash or cash equivalent. Okay. So from proceed, deduct overdraft, deduct the cash and cash equivalent at disposal. What happens? Definitely, it will be, it be it will be an inflow only because your overdraft, okay, and your cash in the beginning cannot be so huge, okay, compared to your proceed. Your proceed will be more. You are selling a subsidiary, okay, so you will be selling for a big amount, right? So that amount will definitely be bigger than the overdraft and the cash balance. That's why, whatever it is, you will have a positive figure at the end only, even though it's a small, even though it's big, but the Figure will be positive. Okay. That's why they told to give an overall overall inflow presented where investing activities. Selling and buying is selling and buy comes under investing activities. No, not only for non-current assets. Even if you're buying or selling a subsidiary, a company you're buying and selling, it comes under investing activity. investing activities see overall inflow look at the term they are using inflow outflow positive negative so use these words you have to use it you have to make it very clear okay you just cannot say this will be recorded under cash inflow sorry investing activity this will be recorded under operating activity you cannot just write sentences like this so given overall inflow it will overall it will be an inflow only okay because your proceed is so much big and it will be recorded in investing activity so care would once again be necessary to ensure that all balances at the disposal date are removed from the corresponding assets and liabilities. Okay, all balances at the disposal date, date are removed from the corresponding assets and liabilities so that only cash flows are recorded within the only cash flows. I'm not able to highlight it. This is an issue. Okay, old cash flows are recorded within consolidated statement of cash flows. Okay, so that means you are removing all assets and liabilities. Okay, from the balances you are removing everything. Old cash is remaining, cash flows that we were recorded. Next, let us go to the dividend part. Okay, let us read the tutorial note just for understanding what it means. So, the question asked about changes in group structure and dividends. Make sure that you address both aspects. Both aspects has to be asked, answered. Not just the group structure, but also the dividend part they asked. So the examining team regularly comment that students fail to address all parts of exam questions. Most of the students does that. They finish the group structure and then they go to the next requirement. But they forgot about the dividend part. Okay. So even the dividend part is small, one line, two line, just write it. You have to write. So dividend part, let us see what they wrote about dividend part. Okay. Dividend received by Moes from Damon Port. Are not included in the consolidated statement of cash flow since cash has in effect been transferred from one group member. Since cash has in effect been transferred from one group member to another. So if you see dividend received from mails to dividends are not included in the cash flow statement of cash flow, consolidated statement of cash flow. Why? Because it's like cash has been transferred from one group to another. That's it. One group member to another. There is no actual cash inflow or outflow. Okay. So it is not included the dividend is saved okay now we'll see about the nca so the nci the non-controlling interest share of dividend would be presented as a cash outflow in financing activity the nci's share of dividend definitely dividend they will also have a share okay where will it be presented cash it will be shared as a cash outflow first of all understand it okay 
because you have to pay. So outflow, where will it be recorded? Financing activities. Anything relating to dividend comes in the financing activity. The equity, dividend, financing. So it's like that. Now let us go to path C. Assets held for sale. So you have to say whether it is assets held for sale or not. Or discontinued operations. Okay. So start. So definitely I will say start with the definition. Start with the definition of asset held for sale and then it apply to the scenario. This is the way you have to answer any SBR question. Whenever they say this or that. Or the whether it is this help for sale or discontinued operation always start by defining according to the standard then you apply it to the scenario the rules okay this is how these are the steps so now let us go if you see the answer okay as is help for sale it is divided in three paragraphs and then discontinued operation itself is a big okay so now always start with the submitting as is help for sale okay there are different paragraphs then we have discontinued operations then we have there are different paragraphs relating to it we'll see it. first we'll see assets held for sale okay which standard it is it is ifrs 5 this standard is very important standard it always comes i have seen it comes okay at least 95 95 to 98% it comes okay out of 195 times i've seen ifrs 5 coming okay so be prepared for the standard ifrs even though it's a small standard but it comes very repeatedly uh, frequently so ifrs 5 means non current assets which are held for sell and discontinued operations define an asset so this is the definition as it is okay the definitions are given as it is from the textbook so it defines an asset held for sellers one where the carrying amount will be recovered principally through a sales transaction Okay, now that is the definition. So to be classified as self for sale, a sale has to be highly probable. How can it be classified as self for sale? These are the conditions. There are some conditions. You just cannot classify an asset help for sale. Looking at the facts from the case study. That because they told they have intention to sell, that means it's a sell. No. There are certain conditions from the rule standard. What are they? Sale has to be highly probable. Probability of sale has to be very high more likely that sale will take place next two conditions are there two conditions has to be met both conditions has to be met one is sale has to be highly probable the next one is asset should be available for sale in its present condition present condition that that means you should not make any changes to it to make it saleable maybe it's not in a good condition it cannot be sold now okay no it has in this present condition whatever condition it is if it could be sold in that condition that asset and highly probable then it could be classified as helpful cell so now in the case study we'll see do they meet these two conditions or not if they meet both fine helpful cell if not not helpful cell then we'll go for discontinued operation and see okay so the first paragraph definition and the two uh, two uh, the two criteria is given second paragraph is just two line at face value, Vessen will not appear to me. This definition has no sales transactions to take place. So, okay. Not appear. As no sales. Why? Transaction as no sales. So, they does not. At the face value, that means when you just see on the top of it, it appears like they didn't meet the definition because no sales transaction took place. Now the last paragraph linking the standard with the case. Okay. So every time you don't have to say IFRS 5 non-current assets held for sale and discussion. No, no, no. You don't have to write the whole thing. Just write IFRS 5. That's it. It's understood. IFRS 5 does not explicitly extend the requirements for help for sale. Okay, does not explicitly extend the requirements. For help or sell to situations where control is lost. Please understand this. They do not extend the requirements for help or sell to situations where control is lost. Sometimes you are just selling it off. Selling. But control is not lost. But in this case, control is lost. That time you cannot extend the requirements for help or sell. However, 
the board have confirmed that in instances where control is lost subsidiary assets and liabilities should be derecognized okay what did they say board have confirmed that if the control is lost their assets and liabilities should be derecognized the subsidiaries so loss of control is a significant economic event isn't it this is not a small thing when you're losing a control is a very significant economic event and fundamentally changes the investor investor relationship therefore the situations where the parent is committed to lose control should trigger a reclassification as help or sell so where a parent is committed to lose control lose oh god this is very irritating when my pen doesn't work because i'm wasting a lot of time not able to highlight it So, paint is committed to lose control should trigger reclassification as self or sell. Whether they should be extended to situations where control is lost or other causes would be judgmental. Okay. There are judgments on it. Whether this control is lost or other causes. It is possible, therefore, that vessel should be classified as self or sell. This is your conclusion. And you should give a conclusion like this in the terms of like it is possible it might be it's most likely in this situation it appears that so these are the terms you have to use with your answer because you cannot be 100 percent sure okay that's why they said it is possible therefore that watson okay the name name of the company should be classified as hell for sell okay Next, let us go to the discontinued operation. Why classified as helpful cell? Because lost control. Parent lost the control. Discontinued operations. Here also same. Start with the definition of an asset helpful cell and then apply to the scenario. Remember, you have been asked to discuss both Burham and Watson. Both Burham and Watson. So, you are discussing together. Or discontinued operation. Because both of them, both of it we are selling. One. We are selling completely from 60 uh, from a uh, I don't remember the percentage. The other one we are just selling it, but not entirely from 52 to our 35 percent. The other one completely 80 percent you are selling off. Okay, so let us go here. Also, same standard I for us five discount operation and. Asset help for sell, same standard. IFRS 5 defines a discontinued operation. Please read the definition from the textbook, also you can read it the same thing. So I'm just quickly going through the definition. As a component of an entity which either has been disposed of or is being classified as help for sell. Either. So either this or that. Either it has been disposed of or it has been classified as help for sell. Okay, so discontinued operation is defined like that. What are the three things? Okay. Separates a major, uh, sep uh, sorry, represents a separate major line of business or geographical area of operations. Okay. Second, is a single coordinated plan to dispose of a major, separate major line or area of operation is a subsidiary acquired exclusively for resale. Okay. So, or the, so the word says or 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 means any one of these three things is fulfilled. It's a discontinued operation. And means all together has to be fulfilled. Or means if one of it is fulfilled, it's okay. So let us see. Now they're talking about Burham first. Okay. So for Burham is separate paragraph. This paragraph is for Burham. And the last paragraph is for Watson. This is how you need to answer. Skills, you need to develop out this. Different paragraphs, different companies. Burham has been sold during the year. But there appears to be other subsidiaries which operate in a similar geographical regions and produce similar products. You see. I have highlighted in your requirements also in the case study also the similar geographical regions and similar 
produce similar products. So little guidance is given as to what would constitute a separate major line of business or geography operation. Not much has been given about it. That what is a major line of business or geography operation. So the definition is subjective. And the director should consider factors such as material. What are the fa uh, factors they should consider? Materiality. Relevance. Before determining whether Burham should be presented as discontinued or not. You see how you are reaching to the conclusion. You are not you are not saying with confidence that it should be discontinued or not. You are in a dilemma, right? So when you are in confusion like this, feel free to answer like this. That these are the factors needs to be considered before determining whether they should be presented as discontinued or not. Keep it like this, that's it. Don't say keep it discontinued or don't say it not to be discontinued. Don't say like that because if you say you have to give facts, you have to prove it, you have to justify, and it becomes and how can you justify? Because in the marking scheme also it was not justified. And if you try to justify from yourself, you don't know first in the first instance whether you'll be correct or not. You need someone else to mark it for you, right? And if you're doing self-study, it becomes more harder. So don't take the hard step, take the easy step, go by the marking scheme answer. Even though your answer might differ, in your mind you might think a different answer. That is the safest route. Because this answer has been tested. This answer has been presented for you for, for a reason. Okay. Next, let us go to the Watson. The same is true for Watson. You see, even for Watson, it is true. Same. So, assuming it can be classified as helpful cell, it would need to be a separate. Assuming it can be classified. So, you are assuming, okay, Watson. For Watson, this is okay. That it can be classified as helpful cell. After that, it would need to be. A separate major line of business or geographical area of operation to be presented as a discontinued operation. If it's a if it's a help for help for sell, after that also you should see whether there's a major line of business or a geographical location. If not, cannot be discontinued operation. Otherwise, it can be presented as a discontinued operation. So just see, always the questions are answered in terms of probability, in terms of like it's more likely, it is uncertain, or it is most likely to be. They never give an answer 100% with 100% no assurance. You can never do that. In SBR, as an auditor, as a tax advisor, you can never do that. You are always giving answers like that only. Okay. In the professional paper, it's like that. It's always like that. Next is the final requirement is part D. We are, we are talking about the conceptual framework. Probability. Okay. Tutorial note. I finished the video on conceptual framework part one and two. Go and check out. Okay, those are the first video. The first video is conceptual framework, first topic, but it has been divided into two parts, part one and two, because it it's it's that long. Sorry, I don't remember whether it's two parts or one part, but uh, it, it's a uh, quite a long uh, video is there on conceptual framework. So do go check it out. Okay. Tutorial note. This question requires knowledge of recognition criteria in a range of IFRS and IAs. In a range of IFRS and IAs, not just one IFRS or IAs. In many different IFRS and IAs, you need to know the knowledge of the recognition criteria under each to answer this question. Standards as well as even the conceptual framework knowledge you should have. So the context is core. If your knowledge here is lacking, then you should revis revisit the study text. You can even check the video, my video on conceptual framework, okay? Because the other standards, I didn't still make a video on the other standards. Because inshallah from tomorrow I'll be starting with IAS 1. Okay. I'll be first finishing the IAS and then IFRS. Okay. So let us start. Let us see the answer. So if you see it's a plenty big answer. So let us read. Different accounting standards use different levels of probabilities. Okay. So the starting is that we know since there are different accounting standards, we know that they use different levels. Not all accounting standards use same level of probabilities. No, no, no. 
they use different level of probabilities okay to discuss when assets and liabilities should be recognized in the financial statements for example economic so they are giving example give examples you should give examples like this economic benefits from property plan and equipment and intangible assets need to be probable to be recognized isn't it to be classified as help for sale the sale has to be highly probable so now you are talking about probability that's why you are giving probable okay so you are saying it will be recognized if it is probable here also you are talking the sale if it is highly probable it will be classified as helpful sell next let us go to is 37 okay just see how you are using each standard is 37 so is 37 is what is 37 is provisions condition liabilities and condition assets an area where you need to use highly professional uh, judgment is needed right an area where probability is very high in this standard that's why is 37 specifically you always uh, talk when you talk about conceptual framework okay so is 37 under this standard a provision should only be recognized if an outflow of economic resources is probable you see so contingent assets on the other hand can only be recognized if the inflow as economic benefits is virtually certain okay it's virtually certain here they didn't okay what is it it is talking about contingent asset this can only be recognized if inflow since it's a contingent asset so definitely inflow is inflow is virtually certain this could lead to a situation where two sides of the same court case have two different accounting treatments okay this could lead to situation you see this is not probability now this is virtually certain here they didn't say it's probable where Whereas in the other places you see they told about probable, probable, probable. But here they told virtually certain. So that's why this could lead to a situation where two sides of the same court case have, have two different accounting treatments despite the likelihood of payout being identical for both parties. Now let us go to the contingent consideration. So they, they, they told you to talk about all this. IS 37, the contingent consideration in different paragraphs. Okay. So the contingent consideration transferred on a business combination is recognized in the financial statements. It is recognized in the financial statements. Regardless of the level of probability, regardless of the level of probability, it is recognized. It does not matter what is the probability, whether you are likely to receive it or not. You will receive, you will recognize it so instead the fair value is adjusted to reflect the level of uncertainty of the contingent consideration so the fair value is adjusted we adjust the fair value right contingent consideration is something in the fair future contingent it is co conditional on something that consideration so fair value has to be adjusted what is the tutorial note conceptual framework has been recently re uh, revised ensure your knowledge is up to date okay so since this is an area that means this is an area which is more likely more likely to come for you because it is recently revised the 2018 uh, conceptual framework recently it came up because during my time it was not there two years back it was not there So now, in the 2018 conceptual framework, you start with this. Okay, this is the topic 2018 conceptual framework. There are so many. During my time, it was 2015 conceptual framework which we had to do. Now it is 2018 conceptual framework. So. Two thousand eighteen conceptual framework. What did they do? The board confirmed a new approach to recognition. They changed the recognition this time. Okay. Hmm. 
new approach to recognition before it was based on probability you used to recognize now 2018 conceptual framework what did they do they change the recognition so which requires decisions to be made with reference to qualitative characteristics of financial information okay qualitative characteristics yesterday i discussed when i discussed conceptual framework what are the qualitative characteristics okay so now reference is based on that whether it will be recognized or not so the conceptual framework says that an item is recognized if it meets the definition of an element and if recognition provides use of a, two things it has to do first it should meet the definition of an element what is it what does it mean element what are the elements five elements are there what are they assets liability equity income expense so an item if it meets the definition of an asset okay let's say it meet met the definition of an asset still it will not be recognized as an asset it will only be recognized as an asset you have to see two things extra whether if you recognize it whether it is a relevant information number two whether it gives a faithful representation of an asset or a liability so now it has changed okay if it does not meet the definition of an asset for example then there itself it's over the game is over you don't go and check whether it will give relevant information or whether it will give a faithful representation that is not needed the moment it does not meet the definition it is automatically not recognized okay so please let me highlight it for you definition of an element and it provides with this and this two two things definition it has to meet the definition first of asset liability equity income and expense one of it out of this then when you present it relevant information faithful representation of the asset or liability because these two are the characteristics okay yesterday we went through the qualitative character there are six qualitative characteristics okay out of six two are fundamental four are enhancing so the two which are quality is uh, fundamental are what faithful representation and relevance the four enhancings are timeliness verifiability understandability comparability okay but those four are not talked much about when it comes to the usefulness of information most of the time it is about these two characteristics the two fundamental characteristics that is relevance and faithful representation okay that's why this is always repeated that's why i've highlighted out for you next so the key change what is the key change in the 2018 conceptual framework okay it is therefore to remove remove the probability criteria criterion So the conceptual framework will inform the revision of a current IFRS and IAS standards as well as the development of new standards. Okay. And this may mean that more assets and liabilities with a low probability. This means that more assets and liabilities with a low probability of inflow and outflow of economic resources will be recognized in the future. You see, even if they have a very probability is low. Still, they will be recognized in the financial statements assets and liabilities, more assets and liabilities because of this new recognition criteria. So the board accepts that prudence could still mean that there will be inconsistencies in the recognition of assets and liabilities within financial reporting standards, but maybe a necessary consequences of providing investors and lenders with the most useful information. Yes, what is it saying? They are saying that still. Even if they have changed the recognition criteria, there can be inconsistencies. But they feel that this is better. Okay, this is necessary. Okay, because 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 this will give investors and lenders more inform useful information. Even though there are inconsistencies. Okay, that's what it means. So now with this, I have finished question number three also, and now let us read the marking guide. Just go through the marking guide, and then I will go through the examiner's comment. Okay, what what is the marking guide? Twelve marks, as I told, six marks calculations, six marks explanations for the cash generated from operations for part A. Part B, how did you get the six marks? Please pay careful attention. One mark is for shares and deferred cash. You are just applying it, okay? 
to the scenario for the share and the default cash. Three marks is for the impact. Okay, including dividend. Okay, the subsidiary accusation because when you acquire, there are more things to talk about than you have disposed of, and subsidiary disposal is only two marks. The impact on the cash flow. Part C. Again, it is for six marks. How did you get the six marks? Listen, three marks. Okay. Three marks is how did you get the three marks? IFR has five definitions of discontinued operation and application to the scenario. First, you have defined discontinued operation and you have applied to the scenario. So, three marks. For the definition, one mark may be application two marks. So, three marks. One mark for help or sell and application, uh, the consideration for help or sell, whether it is help or sell and you apply to the scenario, only one mark. And two marks is for discontinued operation. Sorry, loss of control. See, loss of control is very important. And how you have applied to the scenario. That's how you are getting the six marks. The last part D, three marks and three marks. Three marks for conceptual framework, the three marks for inconsistent application of probability, okay, including examples. You are giving examples. How it is inconsistent when you apply the probability? We just saw in IS 37 and also through the new conceptual framework, conceptual framework 2018, that they have removed that probability from the recognition criteria. So, three marks and three marks, part D. Okay. Now, let us read the examiner's comment, and with this, I shall end this video. Okay. Because it's important to read the examiner's comment, there are some useful things which students get to know through the examiner's comment the mistakes they have been doing and what other things they need to focus on so the statement of cash flows will examine regularly in sbr exam as they have they form part of the group accounting as aspect of the syllabus so through this one thing understand statement of cash flows you can expect because it is in their group accounting syllabus next candidates ignored that they had to draft an explanatory note and simply show the calculation of cash generated from operations so you have been asked to draft an explanatory note. You have to present it in such a way. Okay. Just simply don't show calculation. You will lose those one or two marks. Some candidates show the accounting entries for the various elements set out in the question, even though this was not required. Okay. So accounting entries. What are the accounting entries for the various element? What does it mean? That means debit, credit, debit, credit. You are saying this is debit here. This is credit. It's not asked. It's not asked. The question did not so don't waste time. So the maximum marks available for simply showing the calculation. Just for the calculation is six marks. We saw in the marking scheme. Okay. So to is only half of the mark. The total is 12 marks. So half of calculation that means remaining half you should be good in explanation also you have to explain how the adjustments has been done okay next depreciation had to be added back and not deducted okay most of you what happens is you deduct the depreciation from profit before tax remember depreciation has already been deducted beginning so again when you deduct you are reducing your profit before tax further down don't do that. You need to add it back. It's a non-cash item. This is a cash flow statement. You add back expenses. You deduct your profits and gains and everything. Okay. So add depreciation. Don't deduct. It's a common mistake. So, so the examiner is saying candidates performed well on that part, on this part of the question. That means party. So the second part, what is it? Explanation. How changes to the group structure and dividend will have an impact on the consolidated statement of cash flow. So before, historically, this was a calculation question. But now, they are making it a discursive question. Okay. Here also, students performed quite well. Okay. Quite well they have performed even in this part. The third part. Okay. 
So the third part of the question requires candidates to advise the directors as to be held for cell and discontinued operation classification. Whether it should be held for cell and discontinued operation classification. Okay. You have to advise the director. That's what the requirement asked. So it is important that they realize that there is a small mark for simply setting out the rules in IFRS 5. Okay. You have to set out the rules in IFRS 5. What are those rules? For discontinued operation, there were three. For uh, health for cell, there were two. Sale highly probable and sale is in sale is available in a present condition. So these are some rules which you need to set up from IFRS 5. Small marks is given for those. If you are not giving those rules, you will not get those marks. You simply just cannot say this is health for sale, this is not health for sale. No rules. You have to mention the rules first. And most of the marks are how you apply the principles to the standard. Okay, in the in the standard to the case study. And also the question asks discussion of both health for sale and discontinued operation criteria, not just one. There are two separate things. Criteria is different for these two things. You need to explain both. Both issues need to be dealt with. If you just deal with one issue, you will get only that many marks. But candidates focused on health for sale. But only little discussion on discontinued operations, you see. So with this, I have finished question number three and I hope that this you find this useful and don't forget to much watch my other videos also. And hope and see you in the next video.